Hello, monsters abound here, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires and a brand new campaign. Oh god, I was shot. As. Well, some people may say I'm a bit like one, yes. Uh, we are playing as the, the Rotblood tribe, which is a mod available on the workshop. And uh, so basically it's a Norska mod. I know, Norska. It's one of those factions where you, you kind of go, Oh yeah, Norska's in the game, aren't they? I'd completely forgotten about them. Have they fixed the, the monster hunts yet? And the answer is yes, they are still in the game. And no, they haven't. So so I thought, why not play the <laughs> play the poor the, the, the poor red-headed stepchild of, of Total War Warhammer. The poor Norskans, bless their little hearts. They're probably the fact. I mean, I know Bretonia hasn't really had much, but they at least had Rapants as a free LC. Whereas the Norskans have had nothing. Like, absolutely. They have not been touched. Apart from being made worse. <laughs> so, this is going to be fun. So, uh, the Rockblood tribe, as the name suggests, are like Nurgle boys. I think they've got something going on with the Skaven as well, because we've got an unbuilt Skittergate here. Where Skittergates are like. Um, Skaven teleportation devices, effectively. So, so there we go. Uh, so we've got something to do with that. So, uh, while well, faction traits are unknown because uh, we don't have them, it's something to do with Skaven. It's probably fine. Uh, we start off with Bodvar Rib Spreader. Yes, ladies, he is single uh, for good reason. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Um, so. So his traits are, he gets income from post-battle loot, increased by 30%, income from sacking and looting by 30%, he has more money attack when fighting against the Empire, and he causes terror when fighting against the Empire as well. It's like got a little, little body on his axe there, I don't know why he's so small, but he's fine. Um, we do have some abilities as well, he gets leader of the tribe. Uh, it doesn't say what, it just has a duration, it doesn't say what causes that to increase, so... It says slaughter, slaughter is his foes, so maybe that's fine. Uh, we've got Inflict Cowardice, so Assault of the Rib Spreader, reduces uh, leadership, lovely stuff. Uh, Cripple the Foe, which is uh, a debuff, a hex debuff, there we go. Uh, we've got Slaughter the Cowards, which is a big old. Is that an AoE? It just affects one unit. Okay, big, big direct damage area spell. Oh, is it an area spell? Holy shit, that's pretty pretty rough. Uh, we've got Nurgle's Blessing, because of course we are a Nurgle boy, which gives us regeneration. Very nice. Uh, well, well, it's, um, if our hit points are less than 10%, then we've got a 50% chance to heal, or we could just keel over and die. So, options. Uh, we've got t Toxic Miasma, uh, which is going to just do a little bit of damage to everyone around him all the time, and also decrease speed by 45%. Holy balls. And, and armor as well. Very nice. Okay, good. So, uh, oh, he always gets Bile Spew as well. A mighty beast, wracked by corrosion and decay, taller than a man and possessed of a crushing mass. This rotting creature of the Earthfather is the personal mount of Bo Bodvar Rib Spreader. There we go. He's also got a Seismic Slam. Oh, there we go. Uh, good stuff. And he's got oh, Angel of Disease. That's, that's Kugath's thing, isn't it? And purif Putrefying Ooze. More Missile Resistance. I mean, he's got a Fetid Stench as well. Look at that. That's Leadership. Hero Killing Boss. Okay. <laughs> Hero Killing Boss. I don't know. That seems... Um, Fine. Good. Uh, we also start with a friend. We have uh, old Ivar Sword so Swordson. Sword Swordson. He's a big boy. He looks fun, doesn't he? Uh, so he... he it, Is he a caster? No, he does have like a... Oh, he is a caster. And he's also got like a range attack as well. Don't know what's going on there. Uh, so he's got diseased renewals that replenishes ammunition. If he's, in, if he's engaged in melee. Okay. He's got pestilent power. Which is, uh, oh, it's basically like the thingy, yeah, that um, Marathi has, except only cast it on yourself. Corrupted Captor, which summons unit of infected captives. Oh, affects enemies in range. Okay, so basically it turns them into, okay. Uh, frenzied Fever, increases accuracy, reload skill, and also causes damage per second. Fair enough. And Flung Pestilence. 
reduces range and missile damage, not to mention it's got life theft as well. Effect intensity increase with each kill made by this unit, so uh, good. Good, good, good. Right, our victory conditions are basically kill the Empire. Fair enough, can do. Uh, we're going to immediately start by putting Ivar in... Ivar the engine in this, in this army there. There we go. Now we start off at war with the Varg. Is who is the who is the faction? Oh, it's, it's Sutha Eek is the faction lead. Oh, he wants a peace treaty already. Well, unfortunately, I've got nowhere to live. And we also have some some special texts. So we've got solidify the alliance. Neither Bodvar Rib Spreader nor Skarik Spine Mangler truly trust one another, but a gesture of good faith from the Rock Blood tribe goes a long way towards solidifying their agreements. It's going to cost us 200 warp stone, but it gives us two it gives us 20 warp stone per turn, more diplomatic relations with Clan Festa, whoever the hell they are, and more Skaven corruption in adjacent provinces. I mean, I guess it's fine. We may as well. We've got 200 warp stone. May as well blow through that immediately. I uh, don't know if that's the right choice, but we're going to do it anyway. And uh, oh, you're going to bring in reinforcements. That's that's fun. And you've got lots of cavalry. Oh joy. Oh joy. This is a this is a rough first fight to be honest. This is this is quite mean. I do not have many... In fact, I've only got two missile units. Well, I've got... Th well, technically three, I guess. I've got... I'm gonna really... I'm gonna really need to nail down these, um... These horsemen, because otherwise they're gonna make... They're gonna shred me. Oof. This is... This is kind of rough. First battle of a brand new campaign. Let's call that new campaign. Battle smell! It smells a poo because it's Nurgle, but you know, you know it smells like opening a brand new box of GW goodies. Oh, that smells so good. It smells expensive. <laughs> it's the most expensive smell you'll ever smell. So, Ivar has got this, like, bolt thing that you can shoot. It's like that. It's pretty good. It's doing quite a lot of damage, which is just as well, because they've got a lot of people that can throw shit at me, and I can't catch them because they're on horseback. So, uh, this is fun. Our other boys, the grenade guys, they're doing this. It looks very, I mean, it looks very impressive. It is not as good. <laughs> it doesn't actually do much damage. Like, it's not, that's not that impressive, is it? It does only six damage. Um, and it's, it's generally pretty bad, so... Yeah, I don't I don't think we'll be recruiting many of them. That's pretty that's pretty poor. Ivar though, getting just absolutely nailing guys, left, right, and centre. Up to 65 kills already. Very good. Uh, we have managed to see off, you know, quite a lot of the enemy cavalry, which is good. If you're new to the channel wondering how I'm commanding my army while I'm not actually commanding it, it's because this is the replay of the battle that I played previously, not not me actually playing it. But this is basically what I did. I just I just like to get down and see all the fun little fun little boys. Uh, there is Bodvar, rib spreader at full size. He's he's very generic chaos warrior, isn't he? Basically, at a chaos warrior convention, you would not be able to find him. We do have the Rock Blood Engorged. Yikes. Uh, now, all the Rock Blood guys come with the Toxic Plague Blood ability of differing sort of amounts, but the Engorged have got 10. So basically, they get 10 melee damage reflection. So if someone hits them and successfully wounds them, they take 10 damage in return, which could actually be quite nasty. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good. Rock Blood Marauders, they've got four, so not as good, but they're pretty pretty standard. 69 leadership, nice. We've got the Rock Blood Plague Spears. Now, these guys have got uh, Plague Spear abilities. They do damage per second, and uh, they've also got a nice little bit of uh, damage reflection there as well. They are pretty tanky, pretty good. Now we're in the trees. Uh, we also need to use Bodvar to hunt down the enemy general. What's his name? Vids, Vidsmer, Vidmar, Vidimar the Slasher. So we need to use Hunt Hunt down because we've got the Pestilence Engine, which is, uh, it just does damage to everyone around it, which is quite nice. It's alright, isn't it? Uh, Bodvar, he does have, he's, he's also got Rotting Plague Effect, which reduces melee defense and armor. Very nice. 
does a little bit of damage over time as well. And he's got 560 uh, weapon strength, so he is uh, pretty effective. You could turn him into an absolute bruiser. Say that that debuff is is quite nasty. This guy's currently losing. Is that like 15, 15 to 30 health a second when he's got both those effects on him? That is that's rough. He's not going to be doing very well there. Meanwhile, the rest of the enemy army is approaching, heading towards these trees as cavalry stream out of it. Considering the number of units of cavalry they had, I'm pretty pleased with how we've managed to, to send them scattering. Because I was a little bit concerned. A little bit worried. But all right. Meanwhile, Vidimar is fleeing off. And Ivar still continuing to take pot shots. Got to be careful, though. We've got some marauders heading in there. I mean, he's killed 89 guys. He, does, he doesn't have any decent spells at the moment. He's only got... Uh, he's only got Miasma of Pestilence, which is... I mean, it's, it's fine. It's all right. He does have 20 damage reflection, though, which is... Pretty, pretty legit. So, Minimar is running away. We're just going to head back. Bring Bodvar over to help out Ivar here. And if anything decides to come and attack them, then they can take it on together. <laughs> that chariot saw, saw Bod, Bodvar heading this way and decided to just... Alright, fine. I'll go and pick on someone else instead of them. A wise decision. Oh, looks like he's coming back, though. Enemy general coming back, charging in, taking a punt there, but now he's surrounded. Not ideal. Oh, he just took a javelin to the back as well, and he's dead. He's, he's gushing. He's a gusher. And there we go. With the enemy general's death, his army is going to break and run. That was a bit rough for a start, um, but still made some decent cash. We did all right, and we can now take Serpent Jetty as a... Really? You want to kill off my infected captives? I'm just going to let you kill them. I don't really care. Uh, we're going to occupy that one, seeing as I need somewhere to live. And I now live here. And we can get some Rock Blood Marauders. Okay, what do we got? All the normal Oscan guys? Like, oh no, we get some special guys. Look at that. Uh, the Bequeathers, the Rockbud Plague Javelins. That sounds right up my street. The Unbowed, Rockbud Martyrs. I don't really... So we've got the Martyrs here. Now they are unbreakable. However, in every other respect, they're pretty terrible. <laughs> and they cost 150 upkeep. Compared to, like, your basic bog-standard marauders who have better stats and are cheaper. So, I mean, I get, well, I, I mean, they're, they're, well, hmm, I guess the stats are slightly, I mean, these guys are unbreakable, but that just means they're probably going to die and get wiped out and you have to replace them, which is, which is worse. Uh, Noxious Vessel is going to give us, nah, yeah, I don't need that. I would like Root Marcher. Angel of Disease. After winning a battle. Hmm. Act. Do we not like Nurgle Corruption? I'm fairly sure we do. So I don't know why it's, it's flagged as red. But I think that's probably okay. What does Putrefying Ooze do? Oh, it's just armor. Um... Oh yes, of course. It's like the it's the plague, it's the it's the Nurgle Norskan little mini tree, isn't it? Which is also terrible. Income from all buildings. That's pretty terrible. Uh, replenish troops. Kind of useful, but I do think we probably need some more spells. So we we'll go with that. Does anyone want to right off the bat? Is any does anyone want to be some do do some friend stuff? 
So the Deadwood Sentinels do want to be my friends. They are at war with a bunch of people who I don't care about. You don't care about them. I mean, I could just make some money from this. That just seemed like, just, just make some cash, right? Now, we need to get the Monolith of Katam. One, because it's got the Burble Spews Merculent Broth, apparently, which is, it gives me, it gives me a Greater Blight Stormer. Whatever that is. Sounds good though, doesn't it? Uh, and it also gives us the Skitter Gate, because we need to build this. So, we need to head up there. We need to do... And I really do need... I'm, I'm concerned that... I am con I have concerns. I have concerns that we're going to get more horses thrown at us. And currently, we have no way of catching up to them or dealing with them. Because those, those grenade boys, while it looked very impressive... The actual outcome was pretty disappointing. Maybe it would be better on infantry, uh, but currently, seeing as our, they are our only ranged unit, I think we should probably get some better ones. Jeez, confederated already. So if we have 250 infections, we get burble sp Burble Spew Hail Scourge, a legendary lord. Oh, Burble Spew Hail, Skill, Hail Scourge is the chief shaman of the Rockblood tribe, infamous for his command of the plague magics and his ability to spread entropy and decay across all who stand in his path. Currently hard at work slaving over his cauldron, once it has brewed a pox of sufficient potency, he will be free to spread it amongst all those who do not favour the crow. Yes, my ruinous power. Well, that's fair enough, isn't it? Okay, we do have a little army over here. That's Sutharik himself. All we can do is recruit more orders, so I guess that's what we're doing. That's, that's what we're doing. What do we get here? Oh, we got some rot blood hounds. I would like them. Oh, we get some, we get a giant rot fly. Is it just it's just one one rot fly? Just the one rot fly, actually. What else do we get? A rot blood spawn. Rot blood life leeches. Jesus Christ! They got eighty-seven weapon strength. Um, a bile giant? Oh, baby! Now we're talking. Yeah. Uh, a toad king? Sounds quite fun. I'm always a little bit dubious about single entities, but um, infected captives from the loot pile. Income from post-battle loot. Got a warp stone deposits. Okay. Uh, we get 150 income. Yeah. So, do we get any additional money from any of these buildings because one of the one of one of the Norskans biggest problems is that their economy is absolutely garbage unless uh, you have a port which I guess kind of makes sense but the number of ports in this game isn't great so th there's <laughs> The problem is, if you want a decent economy, you'll have, like, settlements all over the place, which means you then need to defend those settlements. Oh, and you don't have defences, so good luck with that. Which is kind of Norska's problem, in that they, you almost kind of want to be semi-nomadic with them, but it's nigh on impossible because you don't have an economy. You kind of need to survive on just sacking and stuff, which is fine you know if the enemy has you know, expensive settlements you can sack. Because if they don't, well, you're going to run out of money. A step too far. Anyway, there's Sutharik. We're going to have to go in there and take him out, I think. It's going to have to be... Going to have to be done. What's that look like? A Pyrrhic victory. But at least they don't have many... Well, they've got four cavalry. I mean, that's still... Still more than I'd like, um, but that is far. I mean, we could always just encircle them and wait for them to come out to fight me. That way they have to come to me, don't they? Yeah, let's let's make them come. I mean, either they take attrition or they come out to play. They've got an option. And if they take attrition, it just weakens them. They're coming out to play. We've got 
significantly less horsemen to deal with this time. It's going to be easy. Right, this is this is easy mode. No problem. We are a little bit outnumbered. But it's fine. We're going to throw our mostly ineffective green shit. Well, it, like, it looks so impressive. I'm, I mean, it did, did do half a unit worth of damage. I guess that's not... Maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I'm being too harsh. That's seen him off. I mean, between them and Ivar... Send that lot packing. Not bad. Uh, we do still have the rest of the army advancing, along with some more... <laughs> Ivar just nailing these guys. This is doing a lot of damage. It's pretty, pretty legit. 2.8k damage seems like a lot. I wonder if we can make it any higher. <laughs> I'm fairly sure there's some legendary laws that increase, increase the missile damage, right? Okay, we now we charge. Although we didn't manage to knock those units out, there's a lot. There's, there's, well, there's not as many horses, so it's, it's better than nothing. The Rot Blood Marauders with play grenades, they, they only have like three shots. So once they've used their grenades, I mean, they're basically our Marauders. Which is fine. And I'm hoping that my damage reflect is, is going to win me the day here. As we move our Pestilence engine up. We just want them to die slowly over time. It would be nice if the Plague Bearers had, like, damage reflect as well. Because they are quite... I mean, they're not, not a bad unit by any stretch of the imagination, but I just feel like damage reflect is a bit more sort of thematic. We've got some Rock Blood Spearmen moving in. That should give them that nasty D, assuming they get... What's that debuff? Are we getting the debuff? The damage debuff? Is that happening? Because they got the... Oh, wait, the different Spearmen. These are not the right spearmen. Where's my other spearmen? Where have they gone? Oh, there they are. Plague spears. There we go. There we go. That's the stuff. Yeah, the these marauders. Again, having a bad time. The enemy general, Sutha Eek. Now, if we win this battle, we will get the choice to confederate his faction. I think he's only got this settlement and another one. But all the same, I'll take it. You know, free free confederation. That's how the Norskans work. If you defeat their faction leader in battle, then you can just confederate their entire faction. It does give you other options as well, but they're worse. So I don't know why you'd ever pick them. It's gen a gen I, I would be fascinated to know whether anyone has ever actually picked any of the other options. <laughs> Has anyone actually ever clicked those buttons? Because I can't imagine they would have. It would just it just seems insane. Like just just take the confed. Especially Especially because Norskan settlements really don't give you much money and you, you really need all of them, so you don't really want them as a vassal, do you? You just, just want just want the settlements, so obviously you're gonna confederate them? Right? It's probably fine. Looking at numbers, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've almost got basically the same. But obviously they started with quite a lot more than we did. So uh, I think it's fair to say that we're, we're definitely winning this. Where did the enemy general go? Oh, there he is. He's running away. Sutharik, and of course, because he's on a chariot, it does mean that he will be able to get away. Look at him go. He's just, he's booking it. Why does he have like a crackly lightning axe? Has he always had a crackly lightning axe? Really? You've got a crackly... Really? Is that your... Is that just your axe? I oh, know, you've also got a crackly arm? Why are you crack... Why have you got crackles? Why are you crackly? Oh, well. He's running now. I guess it doesn't matter. was fairly successful considering we're f you know quite outnumbered um 
again, nice chunk of change there. And we will take the replenishment because obviously we haven't managed to finish them off. But the fuck are those guys? Anyway, uh, four with chi right. So we could confederate them. Makes sense, doesn't it? May as well. Apparently, the Court of Night are dead. I have no idea who they are. Well, they're dead now. What the hell are you doing? What the? Wait, what? Oh, you ran away. Oh my god, you, you ran away so hard. You, like, fled to another bloody continent. Okay, never mind. Do I want another army? Probably not, but this 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 might have some semi-decent units in it. We've also got Sutharik in here as well. Is Sutharik any good? No, he's pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty meh, isn't he? Does he have special skill or something? No, Diabolical Splendor. Okay. Do I want to keep him? I mean, we are losing money now. But we do have an entire... I, I, what I might do is I might bring these boys back. And t tell you what, we'll get rid of these lads. Don't need that. But the Marauder Horsemen... Seeing as I can't recruit them yet, I think it might be a good idea to have some. We've only got one option. Marauders to Builders. So I guess we're getting growth. Good, good for us. And at some point, wait, will we get special building here? Oh, that's the monolithic town. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Right, good. Good. Right, so, next steps. What are my next steps? Well, I think we need to head further in. I would like to see if maybe we could... Are you a god? Hello. Uh, you... Right, you didn't like my treaty with those... Oh, I've got a vassal. Oh, yeah. Look at them. Look at them doing down there. Oh, yeah. Huh. Uh, maybe we could get an non-aggression pact. It's going to cost 5k, but you know what? I would much prefer to be Sigvald's friend than have him start sailing across the ocean trying to pick a fight with me. Uh, yes, that would be insane, but I genuinely think it's a possibility. So uh, let's let's just not let that happen. Uh, we're going to get... Oh, let's go dominating presence. Indeed. You, I'm going to get... Oh, Rancid Visitations. A nice character killer. So, I think our next step is... We basically want to hunt for the Norsecan uh, faction leaders and try and snipe them. Because if we snipe them, then just like Sutha, we will manage to uh, acquire them. My question is also... Right, so... I'm assuming... These guys will have bonuses for our units. He's a Shaman Lord of Nurgle. He, on the other hand... So we'll probably want to get rid of Sutharik, because I guess they're just not going to be as useful. I will... Do you want to give me a Swelling of Doom? Might just stick him in the settlement and give me a. Because I don't think you've got actually. I don't think you've got growth, have you? This does give us more growth. Uh, corruption. No, we don't have. We don't have. We don't have doom swellings. So maybe putting him in the settlement just to give us a little bit of extra growth may not be the worst idea. Maybe Sutharik can just you know spread his wild oats around in his chariot, picking up babes. Got a little level there, very nice. Uh, I attempt to get replenishment, but I am gonna. Hmm. The thing is, Norsecan buildings don't actually cost very much. Like they are, they are pretty dirt cheap. He says, looking at the 10k for that. Mind you, that a normal. I think it's like a. I'm fairly sure that most factions that's like 16k. And like your the rest, the rest of your buildings are pretty you know, inexpensive. Like, 1,800 is basically nothing. Okay, Sutha, you come down here, you're gonna dump... you're gonna dump these horses on me. Thank you. And then you're just gonna sit in there and uh, pimp my ride. Then, I mean, we could go and see if we could find Wolfric. If we could snipe Wolfric. 
let's head in this direction and we'll just we'll just fill out the army because what well, mind you we only got that okay we still will have a little bit of income just not very much When can we get the spur? Right, so we can build this one, and it is quite nice, but it's not going to give us any money. Uh, this will give us a little bit of money. We'll give us some carved obsidian as well. What we want is a skitter gate because I don't know what this does, but the fact that I can't use it is vexing me. Button grayed out is a button unclicked, and a button unclicked is a button wasted. I want more growth. Grow me. Okay, let's meander in this general direction. We just need a little bit of uh, a little bit of heels. Uh, we could actually march, couldn't we? Let's do that. Let's do that. I would like maybe a slavery mechanic for the Norskins. That kind of that kind of feels like it would make sense. You know, they're saying enslave the Southerners, right? Great. Let's have a slavery mechanic. Let's have some slavery buildings in there. Let's give them, you know, the slavery economy, that kind of thing. That would kind of work, but I, I think that that would make sense. You could also, that would sort of like lead into the, you know, the raiding thing. Although I would say that I think the biggest problem with that kind of mechanic war is that ceasing. you will tend to end up at war with a lot of your neighbours and you're not going to have the time to go on fun little, you know, raiding asides when you're desperately fending off endless naval invasions. So, it's kind of like the Dark Elves. Like, like in theory, the Black Arcs are there so you can, you know, send them out across the world, raid the coastline, all that kind of fun stuff. In practice, they sit in your ports so they don't get sniped. <laughs> By, by AI armies, which is, well, I say AI, by high elf armies, because that's what they do. Because basically, until you've taken off one, it's going to be very hard to get past it. So it's always going to be your first. And to be honest, by the time you've got off one, you've probably won the game anyway. Thereby rendering the whole point of raiding people mostly worthless. Oh no, they could have been good friends. They are now dead. Huh. Oh shit. Right, we need to find. We need to find. Wolfric. Oh, found him. Job done. Good. Well, that was easy. <laughs> now we just need to kill him. If we can just kill him off, and ideally not kill him so I can have his mammoth, then I'll get all his stuff. It's like Highlander. It does make... Like, Norsk is a very fast faction to grow. Because all you have to do is like find the guy that's been killing everyone and then kill him instead. Yes, Job done. There could be only one. Uh, Monster Hunter. Do I think Monster Hunter's hunts are still broken? Probably. Am I still going to try anyway? Probably. Uh, but oh, screw it. Shall we? Shall we do it? Shall we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Screw it. Script. So, for anyone that doesn't know, the monster hunts are this mechanic here. Basically, you can pick a monster as a quest line to go through, and eventually you will then have a quest battle where you fight the monster, and should you defeat it, then you get a reward of some kind. It's usually an item, or potentially a, a regiment renowned or something. Something fun. Cool. Unfortunately, in Warhammer 3, they have been mostly broken. The problem being that if a quest doesn't complete properly, for whatever reason, you will never get the next part of the quest. And until you've completed the quest line, you can't start another one. So effectively, as soon as one of the quests breaks, that mechanic is completely broken for the rest of the campaign. That's it. Done. Boom. You're never going to do any more. That's it. Um, and I've, I've really been hoping that they were going to fix it. And yet, as of yet, they seem to have just not... Yeah. I mean, with that said... The new sort of like patching cadence they have going on, which is great, they they might revisit it sooner rather than later, which it might, I, I have more hope now than I did, say, six months ago, that Norska will one day get fixed. So, you know, hold on to that hope. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. It's, it's just, you know, hold on to it. Hold on to your dreams.
Ah, happy populace. Please, Wolfric, stay exact. Ah, you bugger off, you bastard. Okay, where have you gone, you little... You little monkey? Just need to find you. Kick the shit out of you. Tribesmen, gather! Okay, that's quite expensive. However, if we upgrade this, it will give me more money, uh, which is good because I no longer have any. Well, let's hope they're going to pay for it because I've only got 177 gold, sorry, favour in the bank. Because we don't, we don't, we don't do gold here. We do favour. Very different. Very different. It's basically the same thing. My question, why ports give you favour? No, I don't know either. Make much more sense if it was money, wouldn't it? Uh, what we could, we could always just do raiding. It's going to make me 72 monies. <laughs> it's just not fucking worth it. Um, mind you, you're in, oh, you're raid, oh, it does give you, does it give you upkeep? Hang on, does it give you upkeep? Income general, oh, it does give you, holy shit, it does, I, I've forgotten it gave you upkeep reduction. All right, raiding isn't useless, I stand corrected. Um, oh, come on, where are you, Wolfric, you bastard? We can't overrun the world. We haven't got any money. I need to find Wolfric and then I need to kick his head in. All the way. Yeah, exactly. Kick his head in all the way. Wolfric, where are you? All right, who's he at war with? No one. Is he over here? Is he down here? He does have a settlement down here. Has he wandered this way or has he wandered this way? Maybe we should just go and kill this guy instead. I just need to... F oh, where is it? Which way is he gone? Actually, we can... What can we tell? Characters 5. Is that Wolfric? Is he in this region? Well, there's only Doom Keek and Naglafari Plains, so... Control is stabilising. Military presence there. What do I think? I I'm gonna I'm gonna commit. Nope, that was the wrong choice. Never mind, we'll go back. It's fine. At least we're making some money. It's not much, but it's it's I would like some doggos. I do love my doggos. Um right, we could get some doggos. We could the rock blood spearmen are Okay, we could get some of the plague javelins. I do like javelins. I like setting people on fire, and I like throwing sticks at people. My tastes are unusual. What's the, what's, what does the guy say in Fifty Shades of Grey? That basically that, except apart from a red room, it would well the room might be red. I don't know. I mean, I probably wouldn't go that garish, but it would just be full of flamethrowers and big sharp sticks. Which, um, you know, might might put off the ladies, but I don't know. Maybe not. We shall see. Uh, I'm not going to try it. L let's... Oh, God, 150 income just isn't really worth it, is it? <laughs> it's just so bad. Um, I could get more warp stone, but it, get, well, it does give more growth. Do we care about growth? I mean, we do, um, but at the moment, we can't afford... I could go the Obsidian Quarry. It's not much money, but if we could get a trade agreement... Clan Fester would give us a trade agreement Unless and some money. Yes, Are they going to... I don't know if they're going to live that long. They're just one Skaven, little, little skaven faction in the midst of a horde of um of empire boys this does not does not seem like maybe is can i like can i teleport there Dominate. is that what it's there for i don't know right we're gonna we're gonna continue to chase Car um not carl wolfric that's the one i will hear you let's find somewhere quiet to talk 
Hello, Colonel Stair. Oh, right, okay. Really? Really, Colonel Stair? Of everyone, like, you've got guys literally next to you. You could take a punt at, but no. No, obviously not. Right, so... I'm much like chasing Wolfric around. I have a sneaky suspicion I'm about to have a corn horde descend upon me. Um, good. I could build defences. It's going to take four turns. Oh, shit. Do I, do I keep hunting Carl, or do I... Because I really want the, the gate. Could you not? Oh, you want a peace treaty immediately. It is done. All right. Well, that was a quick turnaround. Uh, good. <laughs> what was that about? What is? Oh my god! What are you like? I'm just. <laughs> I'm gonna suck your marrow out of your boner. Peace treaty. Yes. Yes, please. I've bit off more than I can chew. Right, one of these days, I will find Wolfric. Where on earth is Wolfric the Wanderer? I mean, he's living up to his name, isn't he? I haven't found the bugger. I need to keep. I, I want to move faster. I want to march, but I need to keep. I need to keep raiding so I can. I can pay my bills. It's very disconcerting. What I want is this. I don't know who this is. It's always like a, a spell boy. Is, what's he got? A Veil of Blight. Oh, we will get a special guy, won't we? We definitely want a special guy. Enemy casters within range suffer minor miscast explosions when casting. Ah. Uh, okay. Alright. Neat. That's fine. I'm going to I'm going to save my pennies then. I'm going to save my money until we've got enough while I continue to chase Carl around. Uh, let's... Melee attack and weapon strength for Doggo. I do like my Doggos. Right, that means we can do... So, what do we want to do first? Uh, we could do... Okay, we've got the Sign of the Cold Void, the Soul Eater, or the Mountain Cleaver. So we can get a Dragon Ogre Great Horn. That's pretty legit, not going to lie. We can get a Giant Saigor Eyeball, which is... Eh, it's fine. Or we can get, um, it will give us a cold voider as well, but we can also get, so the ancient chaos dragon, frost, chaos frost dragon, ancient chaos frost dragon scale, because it used to be a frost worm, wasn't it? And it was the ancient frost worm scale, but they changed the name, so they've had to make it longer, but that's fine. No, but this gives you more armor, frostbite attacks, and also a vortex, which is pretty good. So I think we're going to go for this guy. So we need to raid the Tower of Crack. With the appearance of giant winged monsters, Chaos Frost Dragons are thought to be a type of Chaos Mutated Dragon that dwells in the underground passageways of the Old One's coalesced climbs. Amongst the northern tribes, there are tales of one such monstrous specimen called Frigastrex, Scion of the Cold Void, which has terrorized the tundra for centuries. Witnesses say that when coming out of hibernation, it emerges from the ground in a heartbeat to indiscriminately devour any unknowing passers-by that get too close to its territory located somewhere in the frozen northern end of Troll Country. Recently, the Tower of Karak and the surrounding areas north of Troll Country have been inexplicably blanketed by freakishly bad snowstorms. Word also reaches you that entire tribes have disappeared from the region without a trace, reportedly perishing in the extreme weather. This is highly unusual. It is not like the hardy Northmen to succumb to the freezing elements so easily. A more likely explanation is brought to you by a few survivors who managed to escape the storm. They say that it was not the icy weather that swallowed up the fellow tribesmen, but a giant dragonish shadow lurking in the blinding blizzard. If there is even the slightest chance the fabled Frigastrex is out of hibernation and on the prowl, then further investigation is warranted. This could end up being a bountiful hunt indeed. I mean, we're currently raiding everywhere else, so we may as well raid down there, I guess. Uh, we'll, we'll check over here. If there's no Wolfric, I guess we'll head back again. Um, but at least we're not at war with anyone at the moment, so that's something, I guess. Uh, but that's going to have to wait until next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.